What's up guys, with Blender 4.3 just releasing in December 10th, I wanted to give an update on how I make and save custom brushes since my last video from one and a half years ago. 4.3 has brought on a lot of new features including how you save your brushes to asset libraries. And now that they're assets, there's new ways of how you visually toggle and switch between the brushes. Since then, I've been using my brushes as a way to kind of accent my 3D pieces and kind of experiment with this 2D and 3D stylized look. My first impression was Blender 4.3 is that it was designed very well and it's not actually as disruptive as I thought and if you are following from my last video everything there still applies to how you make brushes today. Let's get started on my first impressions of the default brushes. Here I'm using the airbrush tool. Right now it feels pretty responsive, more responsive than some of the brushes did before and you can see that the airbrush is doing pretty well. This is one of the new features from 4.3 that I really enjoy because it clears up the visibility of your brushes and it's a lot easier to toggle between the draw and erase. Now in Blender 4.3, after adding a grease pencil object and when you switch into draw mode, the panel should populate at the bottom. They've also reworked the eraser tool so now that when you erase in between a stroke, it'll create new points at the end of an erased stroke. They've also reworked the simplify feature so now it adjusts to your viewport. Here's a quick demo of some of the existing default brushes that are now included with Blender 4.3. A lot of these are classics from the past iterations of Blender like this ink pen rough here. We've got marker bold here which is a transparent marker that you can kind of stack the opacity on top of each other. Marker chisel is like a flat sharpie marker. The pen tool for equal width line work and it's good for blocking in characters. In this new panel we also have the tint here by default which makes it easy to really color in our line work with different colors. Just like in the past we can use these default existing brushes to make new custom brushes which I'll cover later into the video. If you're familiar with other drawing software you know that it's very important to keep your layers organized. Finally, in Blender 4.3, we have layer groups, which are grouped folders that we can put our layers into. This is situationally important if we need to keep our lines and our flat separate, and then we can also keep our shadows with our flat grouping. It is also visibly easier to see how our masks are applied based on other layers. In the past, there was a way to duplicate your brush in a way that was probably not as clear. Now in 4.3, they made it very obvious that you can duplicate your brushes by just dropping down in this menu here. Out of convenience, they now give you a pop-up window that allows you to rename the asset as you're duplicating it. This process is exactly how I've been doing it since I made that first video on custom brushes. Except now, the brushes are saved under the asset library and no longer saved as data blocks in the blend file. This conceptually makes more sense because brushes are tools that you consistently want to use throughout different files. And Blender before would automatically remove data blocks that you weren't using. No longer need to append brushes, but you still have to go through the process of inserting your image textures and thumbnails for them. Now in Blender 4.3, whenever you make a change to your brushes, you need to go through the drop down menu and click the save changes to asset option. The process of assigning materials to your brushes is still the same as before. So typically I make my own material for my texture brush and then insert my texture into that material by changing the style type to texture. Clicking base color to add that texture in. Now Blender will identify when you have an unsaved change into your brush asset. This is indicated by an asterisk at the end of the title. In order to get rid of the asterisk, you have to save your changes to the asset and that'll indicate that there are no longer any unsaved changes. Like before, you still have to pin and save your material to your brushes to keep the material from drifting to the wrong brush. It's now a lot faster to duplicate and make new brushes with this current process. Under Edit Preferences, your brush assets will be saved wherever your user library is located by default. You can find this under the File Paths tab. To add another asset library, simply click the plus button and click a file location that contains all the saved brush assets. In this case, I just duplicate where my brush assets were located under my user library and saved it under a different file name. And now that I've added that asset library, I simply toggle to it and I can populate the panel with my custom brushes. If I want to make any changes to the display size, I can go to the upper right and adjust it there. You can also toggle the names of your brush and scroll through the brush panel in order to see the rest of your brushes. I'd imagine it's a lot easier now to have different brush packs made by different people in the same blend file. With the linking, I think it'd also be beneficial for the memory sizes of your blend files. 
If you are interested in my personal brush pack, it will be included in a link down below to my gum road. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you learned something new. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.